Thank you all for coming today. It's such a wonderful venue. Uh, so thank you to South Sands for, for having us as well. Um, I'm really excited that we've managed to bring together a workshop um, all about my favourite subject, reducing plastic, um, particularly single-use plastics, and in the workplace as well. It's something that I've been working on for the last couple of years in conjunction with Amanda. And um, it's really great to be able to hear from, from Amanda, from Cheryl, and uh, hopefully from myself today as a bit of case study. Um, just to explain, I'm obviously talking to a mic into a microphone, which is unusual, and that's because uh, David is um, live streaming this session today, um, and then it will be available also for anyone to watch afterwards, so if people haven't been able to attend, so um, hello to everybody watching now, live from home, or, <laughs> or afterwards. Um, okay, so the format of this morning is uh, Amanda's going to do a, a quick introduction, um, well about a 10 minute introduction. I'm going to do a bit of a case study about how I've managed to reduce plastic in the information centre in Kingsbridge. And then we're going to have a bit of a session where we can break out, uh, discuss some ideas for our own businesses, feed those back, um, and then we're going to talk about um, the Plastic Clever in Sulcum campaign. Um, we'll talk about the uh, plastic free Kingsbridge and then we'll close and then we'll have some breakfast. Okay, so I'm going to pass over to Amanda Keatley. Hello everyone um, and hello on the camera as well. So um, I am just, I've come here today um, to talk about plastic and you might have some ideas of some of the things I was going to cover. Um, you might think that I might talk about some, an albatross chick um, with lots of plastic in its stomach or maybe a turtle with a plastic straw up its nose um, or maybe um, to talk about all the plastic that we see on the beaches around here. Um, but I'm actually not going to do that today because I think we've been seeing that a lot in the news. Um, everyone's very aware from watching Blue Planet 2 last year. Um, so I'm going to talk about what we can do. Um, and not even really as individuals, we can talk about that afterwards if you like, and I've got a few examples of um, some of my kit, my less plastic kits um, over on the table over there. But um, I'm going to talk about what we can do as people in businesses or any kind of organisation really, um, even if it's a community organisation or a school, what we can do um, to help tackle the plastic crisis. Um, and the beauty of working in a business is that um, any changes you make are obviously going to be at scale. So yes, individuals can make a difference by reducing the plastic in their own life. Um, but as a business or an organisation, any changes that you make will um, have a ripple effect among your colleagues um, and their family and friends and suppliers and um, even your competitors and you know I'd like to suggest that in the case of plastic it's not really um, about competition because it's in everyone's interest for us to reduce plastic waste that um, is ending up in our oceans so you know it's not something that we want a competitive advantage about if we um, come across a solution it's time for collaboration and for sharing that and you know showing leadership really by sharing that best practice um, you know, with everyone that we come across. So as businesses, you're in a really um, sort of privileged position to be able to make a big impact if you decide to take up that challenge. Um, and the choices we make really do add up. Um, just briefly to touch on some figures, um, in 2015, we produced 320 million tonnes of plastic globally, um, which is the same weight as every human alive on Earth to today, um, and that's just in one year. And the figures are set to double in the next decade if we carry on at this same rate. Um, so the, the angle that I come at it, really, um, it just seems logical to me that the more pl plastic we're pr producing, the more that we're polluting that's ending up in the environment because there's really nowhere for it to go. Um, and in particular, single-use plastic um, makes up nearly 50% of that amount, and that's the area that's really growing. So, you know, in many cases, plastic is um, essential for modern life, and in some cases, it's life-saving. You know, we're not saying get rid of all plastic, but it's the... Um, pointless use of single-use plastic um, for something that is maybe going to be used for an average of 11 minutes, whether that's a bag or a cup or, you know, cutlery, um, and then it stays in our environment for centuries. You know, we, we haven't had plastic around long enough to really know exactly what happens to it. Um, 
So, you know, if you think of 50% of that number being stuff that gets thrown away, whether it's single use or disposable plastic, that's where we really need to um, focus our efforts on reducing things in our businesses, in our supply chains, um, and in our personal lives. And, you know, with the businesses we operate with as, as individuals and as businesses. So, um, yeah, and recycling, um, you know, we've sort of been sold this um, solution by the plastics industry, incidentally, in the 1980s, that recycling was going to solve all the problems. Um, admittedly, they did say reduce reuse recycle in that order but everyone kind of jumped on board with recycle because that seemed like the easier option and it meant we didn't really have to sort of address our consumption um, today we actually say refuse re reduce reuse recycle um, because often plastic actually isn't necessary we've got into some quite lazy sort of habits because it's so easy and convenient but actually it isn't always necessary and also I'd like to challenge you to sort of reprioritize that actually, um, you know, convenience maybe isn't the most important thing here. We do need to think about long, our long term health of the planet, which equals ourselves as well as a species, as well as all the other species we share it with. Um, so, just back to recycling. Um, I don't know if you've seen the news articles, but um, last January, China said um, they didn't want any more of the West's um, low-grade recycling, and um, I actually checked out a film called Plastic China, which kind of showed what actually happened to our recycling, and it was very grim. It's basically polluting the water, getting burnt, you know, it's not being recycled into anything useful or, you know, a very tiny fraction is. And in fact, there was a figure that came out from the National Geographic last year that said 9% of plastic ever produced has been recycled. So, you know, it's not actually working as a solution. Currently, UK recycling, I think, is now going to Malaysia and Thailand and Vietnam. Um, and they just don't have the waste infrastructure. So we are paying them to take our waste and then we'll see that basically piling up in ports um, and ending up in the oceans. So, you know, it's really something we need to tackle. And I'm not saying that recycling doesn't work. In fact, I know lots of examples where the circular economy it has lots of promise, but we just need to change it um, because it's not working currently. We need to if we're going to be using um, plastic or any materials in any kind of disposable or short-term way, we need to make sure that we have a proper closed-loop way of capturing those materials and getting them back to be remade into new materials um, rather than having sort of low value slash no value like um, plastic currently has where it just ends up on the beaches. Um, I'll also talk to you about microplastics, which um, basically they found everywhere they've looked. Um, scientists have found them at the bottom of the Mariana Trench. Um, they found them in Arctic sea ice when it's melting. Um, and they've even found it in human poo recent, most recently. So it is getting into our bodies. Um, and we don't know yet the effects of this. Um, but what we do know is that lots of plastic has harmful chemicals, either inherently within itself, such as BPA, which has been caused to knows, known to cause all sorts of um, you know, hormonal um, imbalances, which lead to cancer um, and you know, other human health implications. Um, but also microplastics in the ocean absorb other pollutants in the ocean um, that have been there for a long time and so if fish are eating that and we're eating the fish it's not great news. However, I don't want to be all doom and gloom because I think we've got a problem. Um, the problem is already out there, we've created it. My purpose is to look at let's stop it getting worse because at those rates that we're talking about um, you know, the accumulative effect of all that plastic in just one day, um, you know, we need to act now. There's a real sense of urgency around this plastic issue and there's no time for delay. Um, so I want to challenge you to think creatively about your business processes and, um, you know, the things that you, you the plastic that you use um, in your day-to-day -day business. So, um, 
I actually developed a, um, I'm writing a book at the moment for businesses called um, Plastic Game Changer and I'm trying to inspire people within any kind of organisation to be a plastic game changer and, but I can understand that it's probably quite overwhelming and people maybe don't know where to start. So I've developed something called the five P's to be a plastic game changer. Um, to try and make it easier and it's like a strategic process to go through which will accelerate your efforts. So the five P's are picture, I'll explain what they are in a moment, um, plot, pledge, plan and promote. So um, picture is all about opening your eyes to the plastic problem in the first place, um, you know, seeing your role within it and then visioning yourself and your organisation as part of the solution rather than being part of the problem. Um, plot, which is a little bit of what you guys are going to do in a minute, um, although at a very high level um, thing, is really to identify in your business where the most plastic that you use is. You know, these are the quick win things that can give you some early momentum and help you make a difference as soon as possible because we really do need to act now. So you would be, if you went back to your business to do this um, in more detail, you would be having a look at the kind of, you know, if you've got any business consumable files that show the kind of um, show stationery that you're buying um, and Sam's going to share an, um, quite a bit of information about what they've done at the TIC in Kingsbridge, but, um, you know, it's basically plotting the plastic that you're using at the moment. Pledge is the next stage, which is to pledge publicly. It's really important to do it publicly, um, to you know, make sure that you keep yourself accountable, um, but what plastic reductions you're going to make. So some examples of these um, have been, uh, for example, Iceland have said they're going plastic free on all their own label frozen food by 2023. And Boston Tea Party, who are just based in the southwest, actually, um, they're a really lovely um, cafe chain. We've got one in Plymouth. Um, they took the bold step to take away disposable coffee cups completely out of their cafes. So if you go into Boston Tea Party to order a coffee, you either have to remember your reusable cup or you can borrow one of theirs. Um, or they and they have a system where it's very um, low cost deposit or just drink in like we used to do in the olden days <laughs> so um you know that it's not that hard and we do think that um we can't live without these disposable coffee cups but really we can and i would love to see proper um you know this being taken up at scale where larger businesses such as starbucks or um costa would actually take responsibility for the waste they're generating um and you know and do a similar um, concept. So um, that was pledge. The fourth stage is kind of the meatiest part, which is plan. Um, and the way that I suggest that people do this is, you know, to make it fun and to get there. And you know, a little bit of what we're going to do on the Q and A um, in the breakout sessions now is. Um, you know, touching on, on what you'll need to do, but it's brainstorming, creative ideas, just thinking about alternative ways of doing things. Um, so, you know, as an example, if you've got um, a water um, dispenser with uh, single-use plastic water cups, um, really quick win is just take away those cups. And actually, you could visually represent the plastic that you've saved. Um, I did a calculation the other day where I was working out the size of those cups and um, I think I'm remembering the figures right, that if a company got through 25,000 cups um, a year, which I think is about 450 a week, um, so sort of a medium-sized company could quite easily do that, that would fill the inside of a transit van within a year, um, which is quite a lot of space taken up by their single-use plastic cups, um, you know, for just one company, one area of plastic use. So that's like, it's, it, you know, it sometimes helps because we do, we think of plastic when we throw it away as out of sight, out of mind, but if you can visually represent the plastic savings that you're able to make, it will help um, people within your business sort of, it will motivate them to make those changes. Um, so with the plan, you know, you can do competitions within your team, see who can come up with the most creative ideas or um, generate the biggest um, cuts, especially if you know sort of quantities of plastic 
um, that you're going to be able to save. Um, it's probably also important to track the cost because some areas um, you are going to make um, cost savings as well. Other areas, the replacement might be more expensive. But um, for example, when you just remove the cups and you um, tell everyone to um, bring their reusable bottles to work, or you have a few glasses in the kitchen, um, then you know that is going to save you money over time. So you, you can feed that back into the project for anything else that's more expensive. Um, another really quick example I want to show you. Um, Marketing um, often creates lots of plastic. I mean, this is from Surface Against Sewage, that, and I've, I've quite a few companies that I've ordered from now. You know, you can get really nice paper, sort of that's obviously a envelopes we all know about, but that's actually more like soft packaging or, so, you know, make sure it's recycled and from um, sustainable forest sources but you, and also boxes, because if they, they can be recycled again and again, but also if they do end up in the environment, they're not going to be as dangerous um, as plastic. So the fifth stage is promote, and this is important on so many levels. Um, obviously, from a sort of altruistic point of view, um, promoting the changes you've made will have a ripple effect and hopefully inspire other people, and you can share what you've learnt and best practice, and they will um, learn from that too and hopefully implement those changes in their businesses as well. Um, but also, you will gain beneficially. Um, so some of the companies I've been talking to when I've been researching my book, um, such as Surf Dome, who sell um, surf and skate and ski wear, you know, they've been um, asked to go to talks. They've been part of the um, new plastics economy with the Ellen MacArthur Foundation. Um, they're sharing all the information they've found and also now with their suppliers they've hosted like a um, supplier event day where they've got everyone on board and they've sort of um, educated them so that the plastic coming into their business with their deliveries is drastically reduced um, so promoting the changes you're making is really important too and also there's unexpected benefits um, you probably would expect that customers will be happy but the unexpected one is um, that your staff your employees are more likely to stay long and if you need to recruit new ones, um, you're more likely to be able to attract the top talent because people really love working for businesses um, that have a purpose. So I think I may have already talked too long, sorry. Um, but I think the next step really is that we um, would do the um, case study with Sam. And then after that, I'd really like you to just think about um, in groups um, and write down like what are the key a sort of sources of plastic in your business just off the top of your head like what are the most the highest the areas where you generate the highest amount of plastic waste and then sort of have a creative brainstorm how you can either get rid of them um, completely mm -hmm. or replace it with something else and we'd like to hear some of your ideas um, afterwards so thank you for that thank you yes indeed thank you Amanda. <laughs> I'm very fortunate to have Amanda um, living in our community because you've been doing talks in London as well on the same subject. Um, so we're delighted that obviously you can be here today and be here around for us to kind of um, pick the brain of and get advice from in the future. Um, so I, um, I'm Samantha Dennis, I'm chairman of the Kingsbridge Sorghum Chamber of Commerce, but um, in my day job I run the Kingsbridge Information Centre. and. I was really keen to, to obviously reduce the number of plastics and I wanted to kind of share with you some of the practical tips that we did. So um, I started in the back room, you know, um, I started with what we're using as um, staff and volunteers. One of the first things I did was just switch to glass bottles for our milk. Um, there's several companies locally now that could do that service, Dartmouth Dairy deliver twice a week. So that was a really simple change. Um, things like the washing up liquid that we use, I can get that refilled at Nicholson's. So I just buy one bottle and then I walk up the road and get it refilled. Um, things like the toilet roll, you know, um, there are companies that all deliver it all wrapped in paper. Um, there's lots of little things just in the back room ourselves that can make a big difference. Um, so moving out the front, um, things like plastic bags, and we really, never really used plastic bags that much in the first instance, to be honest. Um, we had a few sort of lying around. Um, and when we had things like the charity Christmas cards, they would always bring in a stash of plastic bags. And you just have to learn to refuse them and say, no, thank you. Um, one of the things we did do, though, was well, spend quite a bit of money, to be honest, on um, canvas bags. Now, in the first instance, we got a grant um, from... Um, 
Councillor Wingate because we wanted to launch, in conjunction with Amanda, a borrow a bag scheme for Kingsbridge. So uh, we produced these lovely canvas bags which had the Hello Kingsbridge Goodbye Plastic um, branding all over it and our website. So although it cost us money, it was obviously a publicity exercise as well. The idea of the borrow bag scheme specifically was that a lot of us have got so many canvas bags at home, but we might buy more than we expect to, we might just forget it that day, and I really don't want to have to buy another canvas bag. So the idea was you could borrow it from the retailer, and then when you finish with it, return it to either the same retailer or a different retailer in the town, or back to the information centre. Now obviously we don't get them all back, and what surprised us is that actually um, it seemed to work better with visitors to the town than it did with um, <laughs> locals. I'd like to think the locals are still borrowing them, um, whereas the visitors, I think it was a novel idea. It's something they hadn't seen before. When you're on holiday, you've got more time to think about these things, haven't you? And they would borrow it at the start of the week, and then they'd have a definitive end point to their holiday, so they'd return it, um, which was really nice for me because it meant they came in twice, you know. Um, so that's worked really well. and. Although the second batch I, the TIC had to pay for outright, and we did a thousand, so we got rid of 500 initially, we have then did a um, batch of a thousand, I've still got some of those left, so the rate that they are going out has really slowed down, and I think that's partly because people are more prepared when they go shopping now, but also partly because we are getting some more back in the system. Um, so that's great, that's worked really well. Um, till receipts. Now, to be honest, I hadn't even considered till receipts, although I know it's in the news today, um, until Amanda's son actually came and did some work experience with me and said, oh, Sam, why are you giving out all these till receipts? They're all coated in plastic. I said, are they? Um, and yes, they've all got plastic on them. So a really simple change to make a big difference was actually just to get BPA plastic-free till receipts. Um, and I think I would be right in saying that Morrison's actually used them. It was one of their things that they picked up on, but I don't know. We'd have to check that. But they don't cost any more money, so um, and that's a hidden plastic. So that that I was really pleased about that. Um, envelopes, you just reminded me as well. Um, we used to send our guide out in plastic envelopes, um, so I just switched to recycled paper envelopes. Easy. Stationery. There's some really I love shopping for stationery, and there's some really like novel um, uh, like uh, highlighters you can get that aren't that are plastic free. You know. Um, there's some really interesting things that actually you can buy. Just switching to pencils, you know, it's quite easy. And you know, buy a sharpener, it's you know, <laughs> rather than massive packs of biros. Um, then the tricky bit came, which was actually what we sell. And this is still a work in progress. By no means would I say that the Tourist Information Centre is plastic free. It's it's hard work and it's a slog. And I've been doing it a year, and I've still got a long way to go. But there are some products where we've been able to make a difference. Um, so we produce these uh, e-coffee cups, which have got the Hello Kingsbridge Goodbye Plastic branding on them. And once again, I was fortunate to get a grant for these because these are available to other retailers um, at a reduced price, should you wish to sell them. Um, so you can always speak to me about that afterwards. And there's a few um, cafes in the town in Kingsbridge that, that actually sell those. Um, novel, really innovative products like uh, splash maps, which obviously we sell a lot of maps in the information centre. And this is a fabric map. It's actually, it's personalised to here, so it's upside down, but it's got Hello Kingsbridge on the bottom. It's actually made out of two recycled plastic bottles. Um, and I think it's just a good way of spreading the message, really. It's a good conversation starter. It's a good... But in negotiations with this company, I had options about what fabric to use. And I actually went for the highest possible, the most sustainable fabric I could. And the only other company using this specific fabric is Lush. And Lush use um, this company for all their, they do sort of the wraps that you can wrap up their little products in and take them home um, as for presents. So it's only us, the information centre in King's Beach and Lush that actually uses this, which I'm really proud about. Um, it costs a little bit more, but not much really. Traditionally, these would come in plastic boxes, and I said, obviously, that's, that's not going to work. So we talked about it, and they came up with a solution, which was just to package it in the cardboard. And I think it works pretty well, to be honest. I don't think it makes any difference. Um, similarly, I sell tea towels. They just come as a tea towel. I wrap them in a little bit of string. Um, calendars. It's really easy when the supply, the, the, the person who actually created the calendar or the product comes in, because then you can stop them at that point and say, actually don't bother putting that in that cellophane wrapper, I'll just have it as it is. And 
it saves a bit of money. It saves them time, so they're happy, and it saves them a material, so they're happy to knock a bit off the price as well. And I didn't have a single person comment to me that, oh, this calendar is not coming wrapped in plastic. No one said a word. Everyone was quite happy just to take it loose with the envelope stuffed inside. You know, it wasn't an issue. Something I am struggling with is greetings cards because they all come wrapped in cellophane. Um, I've got a part solution. The company I use at the moment have, um, it's a compostable cellophane. I don't like it because unless you actually take it home and put it in your hot composter and heat it up and have all the right conditions, it's not going to break down. But it, it will do for the moment. So that's something I still need to work on. And like I say, it's all a work in progress. Um, yesterday, I went to the souvenir exhibition, Giving and Living at Exeter, and remembering to speak, ask every one of them how things come packaged is, is difficult, but it's worth doing because I went out of my way last year to order products that were made out of wood and metal, so they weren't plastic, only for them to arrive wrapped in individual plastic bags, wrapped in bubble wrap, you know, and it just defeats the object. Um, so whenever I order something, I really try and say, can you make sure it doesn't come wrapped in anything? Can you make sure it's not delivered in any plastic? Um, and we're getting there. We're getting there slowly. Um, so the final thing I wanted to say was just about spreading the message. And um, obviously we produce, as the Kingsbridge Information Centre, the Kingsbridge Guide, and this is the new one for this year. Um, the guide itself is made out of SFSC paper and it's vegetable inks and all sorts. Um, and in it, there's, there's an underlying theme throughout it, really. I, I keep mentioning in it, in the content, um, the plastic-free message and keep spreading that. Um, I think sometimes you've just got to make a decision about whether, so what, whether you really want to protect the planet or you're in it for the profit. And a product I struggled with was uh, crabbing lines and buckets. We sell an awful lot of crabbing lines and buckets, and they're all plastic, and most of the time people just use it once, and then it's a bit messy, so they kind of just throw it away. And that, may, that product makes us a lot of money each year, but I felt really guilty selling it, so as soon as we ran out of them back in May, I stopped selling them, which was difficult. My volunteers were like, where are the crabbing lines? And I said, well, I don't want to sell them, so you can send them up the road if they want it. This year, I have committed myself in this guide, in print, to the fact that we are going to have wooden crabbing lines, which my poor father is manufacturing at home as we speak. <laughs> um, and, um, and we're going to do a borrow a bucket scheme. So um, I'm hoping to work with Sorkham Dairy on this because they came to me with a problem in that they, they're, they're big containers that they sell their ice cream out of. They can't recycle, they can't do anything with them, and I thought, well, they'd be perfect for catching crabs in to be honest so um, hopefully working with them and if not we'll get some buckets and we'll create a borrower bucket scheme because most people will have the bucket go and crab on the side and they just need to bring it back we'll wash it out and then it's ready for the next person so like I said I'm committed to that now so hopefully this year you can buy your wooden crabbing lines from me um, but yes I think it's I think it's a case of in some instances profit versus planet it's about spreading the message. It's about having a conversation every time people put, someone decides to buy this or the coffee cup or takes a borrower bag. And, and every time you question a supplier, they then go away and think about it. And they have, so every time someone else buys a splash map now, they'll have that option of it coming in cardboard. And that's how we kind of spread this. And that's the ripple effect that Amanda was talking about. Um, so as Amanda says, I think if we can all just break up now and just discuss amongst the, p the people that are around us ways that we can perhaps um, make changes in our own businesses. And you had a couple of questions yes, to so think about, didn't you? Yes, just remind you, you um, if you think, where are you, using, sorry, where are you using the most plastic in your business currently or, or generating the most plastic waste? So just kind of have a little think and, you know, talk to the person next to you about it, um, go into small groups. Um, because then the seconds, you know, share ideas because you might think of different things to them. And then, um, you know, what could you do to reduce it? Like, could you eliminate it straight away? Just have a few creative ideas. And this is just a snapshot of what you need to really, if you're on board, go back and do with your team. But if we could just start thinking about it now, that'd be great. Thank you. Yeah, if we just do five minutes and then we'll just reconvene and be yeah. back. <laughs> You know you're not going to get it all, and it's only going to get worse. So we have to stop it getting here in the first place. 
it's heartbreaking when you come to a naturally stunning location and then you find small pieces of plastic that wash up by the sea, things that are totally unnecessary and avoidable. One figure that was really shocking for me to learn was that in 2015 we produced globally 320 million tonnes of plastic, which is more than the entire weight of every human on Earth. Obviously cleaning up plastic that's on a beach or anywhere is really important, but if we don't stop using plastic at source, or at least significantly reduce it, all we're ever going to be doing is cleaning up. Recycling as it currently stands isn't a solution, but there obviously is scope to create a more circular economy. If you want to reduce the amount of single-use plastic in the world, the first thing you can do is reduce it in your life. We've been brought up to think if we either recycle it or put it in the bin, that that's fine, it's gone, out of sight, out of mind. And there isn't an away, and it's now the cumulative effect of so many years and so many people acting in this way, it's coming back and being very visual on our beaches. So I'm seeing a lot more people caring because it is fixable. Single-use plastic isn't critical to our survival and we can just rethink different ways of doing things. Just while the um, just while the breakout session's going on, we're just going to have a little chat about some extra things to add to uh, what's already been said. Yeah. So um, yeah, while they're talking about some ideas, I just thought maybe I'd sort of talk a bit more about the business case for using less plastic. Um, obviously, um, you'd be a leader in your industry because people, you know, some people have already started doing this, but by no means the majority yet. Um, how I, marketable is it at the moment? I, sorry, take. How marketable? Is it? Are you finding um, people are yes, sort of seeking out? Very much so, because um, you know, I, I mentioned in my talk just now how um, actually in Surf Dome, when I, I spoke to them, their um, head of HR has actually used it to recruit top talent. Um, so it, it's it's great for um, getting the best employees to come on board, but also lots of customers, um, you know, are naming and shaming companies for using too much plastic on social media. Um, you know, there's loads of um, posts with pointless plastic hashtag and other things like that um, and, and as my my social media account is less plastic UK I get tagged almost every day with people um, naming and shaming um, retailers who I, I won't I do it name. Myself. yes well, yeah. so it, it's very marketable you know um, and also you will reduce costs um, either with the things that you eliminate or also your business waste costs um, because again going to the example that I, I know well with surf Dome, um, they've segregated their waste um, now they're, and they're able to do zero to landfill because of the changes they've made within their business that they're making sure that any plastic that is used is very recyclable um, so yes it, it works very well in terms of um, the business case I'm just thinking uh, the Venus um, cafe yes. over Blackpool Sands I did actually I, I filmed a news item for them um, last year and so that got me aware of their plastic use and since then every time I'm passing. I make a little beeline there. They've also got really good dog facilities, but uh, because of their plastic use, basically, um, you know, I, I go there far more often than I ever used to. I mean, so. they're an excellent local example of someone who led the way. I mean, I remember um, I moved to Devon five years ago, and even then they had, um, you know, a, a poster that said, um, we don't ever give out plastic straws, and it was a picture of the turtle. You know, they, they definitely led the way, and I know they use compostable um, packaging as well. Can I just ask, it's a funny question, I've got to ask it, um, I know somebody who runs a business locally, an older person, not, you know, not ancient, but um, over 50, yeah. and his attitude is, well, you know, basically, I can't be bothered. Is there a generational difference? Should businesses be aware of maybe younger, you know, yeah. younger clients, maybe more conscious than they yeah. might think they Yeah, I would mean, be? Um, you will definitely find that, um, you know, from market research that I've been reading, that millennials in particular, you know, young adults are very passionate about this course, and also children, school children, and hopefully they have the pest of power with their parents. Um, but yeah, you find that, you know, obviously it's hard to generalise, but um, if you were to 
to uh, younger people care about this issue more because they're the ones that are going to have to live with it for longer. Um, you know, I, I suppose it's sad. I, I would hope that not that many older people have that opinion. Um, but, you know, there's always... I think we can't you know reach for perfection with any kind of cause you're not expecting to convert everyone but if we can shift the mainstream so that um, you know we encourage people to be more sustainable and less wasteful then that's going to make a massive difference o overall rather than doing nothing and just watching the problem accumulate every day you know that's to me that we can't go further along that line. Are we getting any anecdotal evidence of a difference to our local environment? Yet? Um, do you mean from using less plastic yes, or more? Um, I haven't heard any anecdotal evidence. To be honest, the problem is there's a delay. So even if everyone was to stop using plastic globally today, which I would love, or at least disposable plastic, um, you know, it, it's going to stay in the seas for years and we're going to carry on you know, living with the legacy of that and having to pick that up. But if we are able to harvest that and capture it and, and turn it into useful things, which, you know, you see people turning ghost fishing gear into, like, board shorts for surfers or, you know, skateboards. There's some amazing things that you can do with the circular economy. And, you know, the problem is there. But my sort of issue is that we really need to stop it getting worse. Right, yeah. So I'm wondering if I need to get back to these yes, guys sure, now yeah. and find out what their um, ideas were. But Lovely. thank well, you for thank that. You thank you. Right, thank you, everybody. Um, I was sort of um, was listening to a few conversations, and um, would anybody like to sort of jump in and feedback a couple of ideas they've had? Yeah. Come on. monitor all the hidden plastic and things so like obviously we we've tried to cut back on water bottles and in the staff canteen we used to have a little plastic cups and if you think about a hundred staff every day coming in and having drinks and chucking them in the bin it's quite a visible difference when you when you monitor and change what you're actually consuming um, and the other thing is our spa products like we've probably got hidden plastics in them and it's difficult when you're trying to maintain a certain standard to offer an alternative that people want for the money they're paying mm -hmm. so it's it's I think it's buying into a theme and then re-theming everything, mm. like having like an eco-friendly side to the hotel that would actually be a pull to people yeah. and, a, and a, a different alternative view in Devon to actually have something that's like maybe vegetarian or something like that. Um, and plastic bags, we try, we, 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 well, we've all got paper or a different material bag, I'm not really sure what it is, but it's not plastic. Um, but in the swimming pool, we have um, changing bags for wet clothes, mm -hmm. and they're plastic. And my pet hate is plastic bags, because you see that prominently on the news and in the sea, and that's the one thing, I know that there's other plastics, but one thing that you see floating around that you hate, but it's just thinking of alternatives for that. that just eliminate that? Well, we, we could, but then people go, can we have a bag to put our wet stuff in? And well, maybe you have a sign and make it. Sorry, if you have a sign and just say we've made the decision as a, uh, as yeah. a company to take away the plastic bags, because I, I know from um, you know talking to friends that have similar views to me, we hate those too. And we're like, people just use it out of habit because it's there. And yeah. part of behavioural change is the environment. You change the environment around people. If you remove something like that, they won't use it, and then you're yeah. not generating waste. And to put it back to old school, we always used to wrap customers in our towels. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. I know, could you, could you imagine telling the population of Thalstone that? <laughs> Rather you than me. But, um, yeah. yeah, but yeah, and then washing, washing tablets and what you said before about you have in-house laundry as well as external, so maybe the powders in that might be a problem. Yeah, uh, just, we probably should say separately, but um, have you heard of a company called Eco Laundry nearby? Yeah, they, I think yeah. We, we do use them for certain oh, okay. things, but yeah. not, not but predominantly. But there's usually alternatives, so it's just one example that, yeah. you know, it, it's just, it's being creative, isn't it? And it's getting, drilling down into that detail, which obviously exactly. you won't be able to do and right here Sam's right now. And I love Sam's ideas, what you've done at the Tourist Information. It's Same a really bold thing. step, and I think people did think about asking the question with suppliers, which takes, what, a minute on the phone, and then you take that one alternative yes. change. It's not really a big deal. I just wanted to say one more thing as well is, you know, 
and I think Sam's kind of um, alluded to this, it's going to be, it's, there won't be an end to the process. It will be a continual process, but actually business is a continual process. It's not like you'll hit your target at the end of this year and then you'll stop, you know, and it, this is just going to become part of the process and you won't be able to be 100% plastic free probably ever, but every change you make and it would be amazing if you could add that to things that you report on and that you show you know as well as the profit and loss if you could add you know plastic waste in there and, and see that figure declining that's kind of a good approach yeah, i agree but that's um i'll pass it over to juliet <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I think um, one thing what Josie and I have done in our business is we do quite a lot of training and um, do quite a lot of brand workshops and we used to always give everyone a plastic folder with all of their notes in and one thing we've done now for all those exercises is we've invested in buying lots of chalkboards, mini chalkboards and chalks so that's just one step mm, helping good. reduce that. I think we still have the challenge of when we do do a big um, document for someone having something to put it in that's sort of not plastic and is keeps it safe enough so if it's a day like today and you're walking somewhere to a meeting so any alternatives anyone has that you know keep documents really safe that it's that's more environmentally friendly Amanda you might have something you can suggest perhaps but some that yeah something like that I think is probably the main thing that we still use I would say would you agree yeah I think that's what we just <laughs> documents and every time yeah. don't give to the client so we just take them <laughs> yeah I think don't know where they go then <laughs> does anyone else want to kind of jump in and feedback anything in particular yeah <coughs> um, I work in two businesses really one is um, classic car and motorbike restoration and we restore a lot of parts that then go on the shelf for months maybe years and we need to keep them damp proof mm. and we use a heck of a lot of industrial pallet wrap cling film mm. and we haven't actually found an alternative to that because it needs to be closely packed to keep the moisture out mm -hmm. um, but once it gets used that gets just discarded because mm. um, we can't reuse it as you know with cling film that's one area that we have a problem and the other area I work in is I work for the Motorsports Association we run all the motorsport in the UK and there's five and a half thousand events organized every year and they all use signage which at the moment is done on Corex type board mm. But we willingly find an alternative, but we can't find one because cardboard won't work because it gets damp. But it can't be something as rigid as metal or wood because of the cars hitting them in yeah. races and stuff like that. Um, just specifically on that second one, I was speaking to a company the other day. Um, I think they supply trade, so um, you would possibly need to speak to whoever your printer is to ask them to use this company. They're called Swanline, and they've um, created... Um, you would need to look on their website, I, I, or I can share a link afterwards, but it's um, a plastic-free, biodegradable, um, and, and they make anything. They can make things for festivals like bins um, that then break down afterwards, even tents, because I know a lot of people leave tents, but also signage, um, and they're basically sort of expanding um, for, it's like an eco board. Um, so that would definitely be worth looking into. On the first one, I know um, shrink wrap kind of cling filmy type thing, for industrial scale is a difficulty for pallet wrap that lots of people have. Um, I'm not aware of a specific solution apart from whether you can find out if you can keep it in a closed loop at all, that it can get recycled back into more of the same thing rather than just going into landfill, or if there's anything else you could think of that is reusable like um, big covers or blankets or something. I don't know if that does yeah, the trick. That wouldn't work in our situation because that's what, something we had thought of, but we've tried it and it doesn't, yeah. doesn't do the job. So. I actually had the same problem last week because all my guides, although they're great paper they come in cardboard boxes they all come on pallets which are wrapped in plastic and I was fortunate that um, someone who happened to be helping me unload um, has a contract with coastal recycling so he was able to take all that wrapping away and actually recycle it which was brilliant um, and but my other option was actually there's an artist uh, local artist who's putting on an exhibition and she's creating some big sea creature and she'd actually if it had come in black plastic she actually wanted me to give it her so she could create this creature for her art exhibition so it's exactly it's not going to be relevant all the time and i only get one delivery yeah uh, that i have to deal with whereas you're getting it every day but um there are options um okay thank you everybody for feeding back and thank you for that discussion i think we're just going to move on now to just um reporting uh, on what's been going on in sulcum and kingsbridge with our relevant campaigns so if i can pass over to cheryl now thank you very much sam 
Now I'm going to cheat because I'm not very good at pres presenting, so I'm going to read. I'm really sorry. But um, Plastic Clever um, has really come um, through um, Anna Turns. She's um, a very proactive um, campaigner. Um, she's an environmentalist. And uh, she has um, got um, Plastic Clever going um, through... through um, Kids Against Plastic, which is a national campaign. And uh, we're really encouraging business cafes and shops to reduce their single-use plastic, including the big floor, which we've already talked about, the cups, the lids, the straws, the bottles, and bags, and cutlery and crockery. Um, so it's kids-led focused, and um, Salkham Primary School um, is very much on board with this, with an initiative to meet the government target in, in 2022 of eliminating single-use plastics in schools. So um, with um, Plastic Clever Sorkum, all the resources are in place to meet that requirement, and they're going to be ready on the website. So we're, we're up and running for that. Um, there's an eco t team at the school which is empowering pupils to achieve this by um, introducing projects and their first one, their flagship project, is to um, help with cloth bags and um, so Plastic Clever are donating proceeds from our grand raffle we had um, during regatta last year and we're giving them um, a thousand cloth bags for the school to then give to the pupils to design a bag and then they can sell them um, to businesses and the public, perhaps at events like Crab Fest. So this is self-sustaining and I think it'll be great for the kids to um, integrate more with the town uh, and be uh, aware of, um, of, of um, environmental issues and their profits that they generate um, will go towards paying for paddleboard lessons and estuary awareness. So that's a nice loop. Um, and they're also organising a Valentine's beach clean. So the school's very open to ideas from the chamber for any school projects or sponsored beach cleans. Um, so that's um, really... Um, good news on that front um, and also Plastic Clever Sulcombe has been approaching uh, the hundred or so businesses in Sulcombe um, in the last year um, Anna Turns and her volunteers have been doing that not the school pupils um, and so we've been going around looking at businesses plastic usage and working with them to see if they can achieve um, the Plastic Clever status um, of avoiding the big four pollutants so um, we've been working away and we've managed to award over 60% of businesses in Sulcombe. So they're not plastic free, they're plastic clever. And um, we're making headway in the town. Um, we've even got um, the multinationals on board, um, quite exciting, that boots the chemists in Sulcombe. I don't know if anyone of you know. Um, Sulcombe's the only branch that is now providing paper bags to customers. Um, which is great, unless, of course, they specifically ask for plastic bags for their medicines. So um, that's good, but we haven't awarded them um, the plastic clever status because, unfortunately, they're still selling plastic water bottles. So um, it's work in progress. Um, and the school cloth bag scheme, um, we thought that would be a good idea for approaching those businesses that really don't want to um, stop using plastic bags um, because they've got very heavy equipment or heavy goods that they're selling to the public like um, anchor chains or um, wine bottles that um, they're still using plastic so we thought the cloth bags we could do on a sort of loan basis um, and see if that works for them would we'll certainly do a trial scheme so um, we found many businesses amenable to the campaign but they still struggle with single usage, um, like mailing out products um, in plastic. Um, but um, I think um, they're now people are now working with employees and who are much more um, aware of of using water bottles. And uh, for example, galleries um, are reusing their um, uh, bubble wrap on 
pictures and things like that. So um, I think reusing is a great way of, of avoiding the single use of plastic. And uh, I think the town council have promised um, us to, um, well not us, but they've promised um, for a water fountain to be put um, uh, in at White Strand um, by the loos. So at least employees can then take their reusable flasks and um, fill up fill up from there um, rather than using plastic bottles. So, um, so it's work in progress, but um, you know we're making headway. Um, and now we've got um, we've got a few posters over there and um, stickers, which show that we're going to once they've awarded their they've been awarded their plastic clever scheme, they can then stick their sticker up in the window of their shop, and um, you know we can um, see that they're really on board. So um, it's it's getting there, but um, it's um, it's quite a hard slog, but um, we're getting there. Anyway, that's it. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Shara. And I think uh, I think what's interesting is that all of this, whether it's plastic clever Sulcum or um, plastic free Kingsbridge, which we're going to talk about now, is it's all been run by volunteers. Um, so if someone comes into you and wants to talk to you about plastic, please be nice and receptive. And you know they're not being paid to do it; they're doing it out of the goodness of their heart and because they believe in the cause. So um, I'm just going to pass over to Amanda just to run through. Uh, the equivalent project in Kingsbridge. Yes, and I'll just be brief because I am um, aware of time. Um, so back in July last year, we achieved Plastic Free Kingsbridge, which is a surface against sewage um, status. We were actually the first town in the South Ham, so we were really excited for that. Um, and so Plastic Free Communities um, has been set up by Surface Against Sewage to get people to um, sort of take action within their communities. And in order to get the status, we had to meet five um, sort of five things, which was to get the town council to um, agree, um, which luckily Sam's on the town council, so <laughs> she was able to work her magic. Um, and then we also had to go and talk to a couple of schools, and I actually did that in conjunction with Anna Turns and Plastic Clever. Uh, we went into Thurston and West Charlton, and also we were liaising with um, Kingsbridge College, um, although we still, that again is work in progress because the person we were speaking to has left. Um, and then we needed to do some community events. So I had already spoken to guides and scouts and beavers. And I do monthly beach cleans with um, Surface Against Sewage anyway, um, all around the South Hams. And if you want to ever come to that, you'd be very welcome. You just have to look on Facebook on South Hams Beach Clean Series. The next one is Saturday, the 26th of January, um, because low they're always when low tide is. So uh, there seem to be a bit more in the afternoon on the last Saturday of the month um, when I checked the tide calendar. So it's 3 to 4 p.m. at Hope Cove. And the Cove are going to kindly give some hot drinks afterwards. So um, that would be a really fun event if you... Because, you know, it's a, it's not just about using less plastic. It's about cleaning up what's out there. Um, but back to Plastic Free Kingsbridge, um, we achieved it by also getting on board. I think we had to, due to the size of the population, we had to have a minimum of five um, businesses to make a change. And the changes involved to become plastic free, they have to... Um, basically eliminate three sources of plastic. So plastic free is used loosely um, because we all are pr pragmatic about the fact that that's quite impossible in this day and age, but to make a real difference. So for example, not selling plastic water bottles or um, taking away straws, you know, for, for um, hospitality businesses, they, those would be um, key <coughs> things. Um, and also refill Devon, um, we have been um, going, and I think Plastic Clever have as well, going to businesses all um, sort of in Dartmouth as well, and Kingsbridge and Solcombe. Um, and, and any business can do this. If you don't mind a member of a public coming in and saying, please, could I have some free tap water for my reusable water bottle? Um, we have some stickers that you can put in the window um, saying that you're part of that. And that's really to help reduce the sale of plastic water bottles which will end up in the sea. So um, the six businesses, I think it's six that we've got on board at the moment, we've got a few that are on the brink, um, are I might need your help. Obviously, the Tourist Information Centre. Lidstons, the butchers, have done some great things, getting rid of polystyrene and using um, paper to wrap um, sausages. And I think they um, air hang the meat. There were three changes they made anyway, which I was really impressed with. Um, and health-wise... Um, 
Tidal Gallery, um, Barrel and Still. Sorry for whoever we're missing, <laughs> but um, we're due to do another push actually in advance of the next um, season because we know after that everyone gets really busy. So we'd really like to add some more businesses. So that's part of really why we're here today because it doesn't just have to be hospitality businesses, you know, estate agents, solicitors, any kind of business that's um, whether you're on the full street or not, you know, there's things that you can change, which we've been talking about. And if you make three changes um, to eliminate disposable plastic within your business, come and talk to Sam or me and we will give you a lovely surface against sewage plastic free um, and it really is plastic free because it's uh, made of wood so that is for displaying in the window and also a certificate and then we can add you to our list and you'll get promoted via tourist information center but also via surface against sewage which is a global campaign which has been supported by harry and megan at their royal wedding and the times i think that they were there christmas charity so yes it's, it will all be good promotion so i'm just going to hand you back to sam now to finish but thank you and um, yes yeah, so they're two really great schemes and it's really uh, good to if you already qualified to get signed up to those i think i've given you three things you could easily do the refill devon scheme um it, not only do you get your sticker in the window you get uh, you get your business listed on the app um as well um tea bags washing up liquid you know toilet roll it's three things already harbour bookshop have we pretty much need to award theirs actually because you know just their gift vouchers were always plastic and now they actually card and that's come from national book tokens as well so there's loads of little things that can be done that would qualify you and if you're sitting there thinking well i've already qualified for this and we're not using any plastic at all um then perhaps you could consider this year when someone might come to you and say well we run these events in the town and we'd really like to do some um reusable plastic cups um, which are gonna we're gonna do on a deposit scheme they obviously cost money um, but it's a really great opportunity for sponsorship actually so um, you know you could get your business name on that it's a really good message to be sharing it helps all our events in the towns become plastic free as well so um, I'll close up now sorry that we've overrun a little bit but hopefully it's been a useful morning and um, thank you all for coming thank you